Welcome to Sinta Statistics and Data Science. Today we are going to solve this problem from ISI MSTAT 2021, problem number seven from the PSB section. So the problem says that there are two urns, each contains n balls numbered from one to n. From each urn, a sample of size n is selected without replacement. Denote the set of numbers appearing in the first and second samples by S1 is equals to I1 through IN and S2 is equals to J1 through JN respectively. Let X denote the modulus of S1 intersection S2. That means the number of elements common in S1 and S2. Then find the probability distribution of X. And the second question, suppose N is equals to 6 and the observed value of X is equals to 4, obtain a method of moments estimate of n. So let us first focus on the first problem, the probability distribution of x. So it says that there are two urns, each of them containing balls numbered 1 through n. So this, suppose this is the first turn, urn 1, and this is the second turn, urn 2, right? Each of them contain exactly the same balls numbered 1 through n. So from the first urn, a sample S1 has been taken using SRSWOR, right? It's been stated that it is without replacement. So SR is WOR. And again, from urn 2, a sample S2 has been selected using SR is WOR again. So X denotes the number of the number of elements, not the elements, but the number of elements common in both of the samples. So now the number of ways, the first in how many ways can we choose a sample from urn 1 and a sample from urn 2? This, this entire thing is an experiment. So First, we choose a sample from urn 1 and then we choose a sample from urn 2. This can be chosen in n choose n into n choose n, right? That means n choose n whole square, right? Num the number of ways to choose S1 and S2 from urn 1 and urn 2 respectively is this, right? This entire thing plus by the multiplication principle, right? This is very easy. So the number of ways we can choose a sample from urn 1 and a sample from urn 2 is n choose n whole square. Now, in how many ways we are basically interested, suppose there are exactly k elements in common. So we are interested in how many of these in choose n whole square samples, there are exactly k elements in common. The number of ways to choose S1 and S2 such that they have exactly k elements in common. How is it possible? Very easy. First we do is, we first choose n elements from the sample, suppose. Suppose we choose the n elements from the sample, which are going to be the common for both the samples. So we can choose that in n choose k ways, right? If we choose n choose k from this sample, right? If we choose k elements and that k elements belong, we can simply put those k elements in S1, right? Simply put those k elements in S1 first. And immediately, since we have, since those k elements have to be in common with S2, that exactly the same elements get automatically chosen from R2 to S2, right? So in how many ways can we choose k elements from n? It's n choose k, right? Now, after this, you know, choosing the common elements, the remaining elements of S1 and the remaining elements of S2 has to be distinct from one another, right? So first, we choose n choose k. This is for choosing the number of the elements which are going to be common. And for the remaining n minus k elements for, uh, for S1, what we do is we choose n minus k, choose n minus k, right? From the remaining n minus k elements, we choose small n minus k, right? That's what we did. n minus k, choose n minus k, right? Now, after choosing this entire sample, the remaining n minus k elements of the sample S2 has to be distinct, not just from the first k elements, but also from the remaining n minus k elements from the sample S1. In general, you can simply think of that the remaining n minus k elements of the sample S2 has to be distinct from the entire sample S1, right? Because already the k elements have been chosen, which is which are going to be the common elements. So the remaining n minus k elements has to be chosen from entirely the, the complement set of this entire sample. That means we have to choose the remaining n minus k elements of the sample 2 from n minus n. So n minus n choose n minus k. So this is the number of sample in which, this is the number, this is the total number of samples S1 and S2 the entire collection of S1 and S2, such that they have exactly k elements in common. And therefore, because this is a classical probability problem, the probability of x is equals to k is nothing but the number of samples in which we have exactly k elements in common and by the total number of possible samples. This way. So this is the probability distribution of x.
that means the PMF of X. This is the PMF of X, right? This one. So we have got the first question. We have got the answer to the first question. Now for the second question, it is said that if n is equals to six, if n is equals to six, and the observed value of x is four, obtain a method of moment estimate of m. So we have got the distribution of x, right? And see the distribution of n. Is, the distribution of x actually depends on two parameters, n and small n, right? But the small n has already been given in question two. It's six. So that means only the capital n is the parameter. The only one parameter is their capital n, right? So x follows this particular distribution. X follows this particular distribution. This one. This right. This particular value. Probability x is equals to for n is equals to six. This is the PMF of x is this n choose k into n minus k choose six minus k into n minus six choose six minus k divided by n choose six whole square. K running from one to six. For n is equals to six. This the, so the only parameter in the entire PMF is just capital N, right? And the observed value of x is equals to four. X if the observed value of x is four, that means by the method of moments estimate, what we do is we we equate the population moment with the sample moment. So here the sample is only one. Only one sample has been taken, x, and that is four. So the sample mean is just four, and the population mean is the expectation of x. How do we find the expectation of x? That's the thing. So for for this particular PMF. The expectation of x, the calculating expectation of x, might be a bit cumbersome. Might be. So what we do is we try a different approach. Suppose let us define that y i is equals to one if ball i is present in S one intersection S two. That means if ball i is present in both the samples. In that case, y is equals to y i is equals to one and otherwise zero. Right? Consider a particular ball, ball i. It can either be in both the samples. Or in just one of them, or in neither of them, right? So if it is present in both of them, then we see they say that y i is equals to one and otherwise zero. And this is true. This is this is defining. This is we define y i for each of the balls, y one, y two, up to y n. So notice that x is nothing but the sum of these random variables, right? Because if there are exactly k balls in common, then exactly k of them will have ones, right? And the remaining will be zero. So ultimately, the sum is going to be k. Right? You can take a very uh, few examples, like a very small example. Suppose we have a population of one up to ten, and say a sample of size five. Two samples of size five have been have been taken from the original population, and you can easily see that x is nothing but the sum of these y i's. Now, expectation of x is nothing but the summation of the expectation of y i, right? The additive property of expectation. Now let us calculate the expectation of y a. So expectation of y a is one into probability of this thing plus zero into probability of this thing. That means ex expectation of y i is nothing but probability of ball i is in present in both s one and s two, right? So what is the probability that the, the particular ball i is present in both of them? So it is very easy. So we already know that number of possible samples is n choose n whole square. So this is true. This is already done. So in how many ways? In how many samples are there? Says so that exactly ball, the ball i is present, not exactly, but the ball i is present. There may be other elements common, but what we are interested in is in how many of them ball i is present in both of the samples. So we can simply put ball i in these two samples. Suppose we take the ith ball and put it in S1, and also from here we take the ith ball and put it in S2. For the remaining n minus n n minus n minus one elements for here in S1, we simply take n minus one choose n minus one right for for the remaining n minus one elements of s one we simply choose the n minus one elements from the remaining capital n minus one elements right and similarly for here as well the remaining n minus one elements have to be chosen from the remaining capital n minus one elements right because we this is this is not about exactly one ball in common this is just ball i in common right you have to keep that in mind this is this this is different case from the previous when we are trying to find the probability distribution where There was exactly k elements in common, but here is not the case. It is just ball i is in common. There may be more elements common. We don't care about that. But ball i is in common. So this is n minus one choose n minus one times n minus one choose n minus one, which is nothing but here n minus one choose n minus one square by n choose n square, which is simply by the calculation this identity n choose n can be written as n by r times n minus one choose r minus one. Ultimately, it is n square by capital n square. Now, 
this expectation of x is nothing but n times expectation of y i right because obviously y i's are identically distributed right so expectation of x is nothing but n times expectation of y1 suppose so that is n square by capital n so this is the expectation of this is the expectation of x now again as i said for method of moments we equate this particular expectation since n is 6 it's been given so expectation of x is now 36 by n right so we, we equate the population mean with the sample mean and hence expectation of x is equals to the sample mean 4 the sample is only of size 1 don't uh what to say don't confuse it with the original samples s1 and s2 this is only about x forget about those things this is only about x so x x follows this particular distribution fixing n is equals to 6 x follows this particular distribution and this particular distribution and the value of sample of size 1 has been taken which is found to be 4 only one observation has been taken so the sample mean of that particular distribution is the distribution is that particular value itself right the, the observed value of x itself sample mean is just 4 and the population mean is 36 by n so we, on equating these we get n hat to be 9 so this is the n hat is equals to 9 this is the method of moments estimate of n right this is the thing so now you get it the solution to this problem and this was a very nice problem so see you till next time